So welcome back to the Impact Arena for the Yonex Thailand Open Super 1000 event on the HSBC BWF World Tour. Badminton is back. We've got three weeks of badminton all here in Bangkok. And what a welcome return it is. So this is what we've seen so far today. Started at nine o'clock this morning. We've got 10 matches for you. And here is the 10th and last match because it's the Olympic bronze medalists and recent winners of the Denmark Open. Marcus Ellis and Chris Langridge up against the left and right handed combination of Bodin Isara and Mani Bong Jongjit. Semi finalists here, would you believe, On 12 court years one. ago? Men's the double. Home pair. Marcus Ellis and Chris Langridge. From well, England. when we look at the draw, all matches today, incidentally, have been from the top half of the draw, and then the first round matches from the bottom half of the draw happen Versus tomorrow. This Manin is the Isara second quarter, and, and we from had a very Thailand. brief look at that, but I can tell you that Alfian and Ardianto, the number five seeds, Ampai. came through. Wahiana from Indonesia. And they're the only seeds in this so quarter. As we welcome onto court, there's the Iran. English combination. And the Thai pair, the Thai pair who played together many years ago, reached top ten in the world, and then went their separate ways, had a bit of an altercation during the final of the Canadian Open. 2013 still had different partners for a while and then they reformed their partnership at the Spanish International Challenger event in 2018 when they reached the final so this is only the second meeting between these two pairs the only previous time was three years ago at the French 750 event when Bolden Isara and Manipal Jongjit won in two straight games. 21 16, 21 13. It was actually 55 minutes, which I was quite surprised about, with a scoreline of 16 and 13. So our umpire for this one is Wayana from Indonesian. Indonesia. He's just conducted the toss of the coin. And I wasn't paying attention, Steen, so I'm relying on you as to who won the. Oh, and yeah. Don't do that, Jill. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure which pair has chosen ends, which, given the windy conditions, could be quite important. So there is Marcus Ellis, 31 years of age, born in Huddersfield, 175, that's 5 foot 9, and 22 in the world ranking at the moment but as you can see as high as 14 a total of seven weeks across two different spells at number 14 in the world reached the semi-final here four years ago when they lost out to the eventual champions Barry and Griawan and Hardy Anto so Chris Langridge is the older of the two 35 years of age born in Epsom in Surrey and he and his partner were the gold medalists at the European Games in Minsk in Belarus in 2019 and gold medalists at the Commonwealth Games a year prior to that. Commonwealth Games held on the Gold Coast in Australia. First English pair to win the men's doubles at the Commonwealth Games for 40 years since Ray Stevens and Mike Tredgett in Edmonton in 1978. So the left-handed Bowden Isara is 30 years of age, only turned 30 last month, born here in the Thai capital. And I was telling you that they'd been in the top 10. In fact, that confirms that they were number seven in the world from the 20th of December 2012 for four weeks. Manipon Jongjit is 29 from Phuket. Actually retired in November 2015 after undergoing shoulder surgery. Ready to play. Didn't think he'd ever be able to make a comeback, so it's great to see him back on court. And they, as a pair, won the silver medal 
at the Southeast Asian Games in Manila in 2019. So when you go back, as we look at our court officials that I was telling you about, if you go back to 2012, when the Thai pair had their highest ranking of seven, I don't know if you remember, Steam, but they won the India Super Series event, beating Ko Soon Hyung and Yu Yong Sung in three games in the final. Also won the Vietnam Grand Prix that year as well. also reached the final of the French Open that year. I, I think they were an incredibly talented pair back then. Uh, unfortunately, uh, Bordi Isar injured himself during the, at that time, World Grand Prix Finals. Uh, I can't remember if it was um, 12 or 13, but, but uh, he got a bad Ladies injury and gentlemen, there. on my right, Marcos Ellis and Chris Langley, England. And on my left, Budin Isara dan Manoping Chongjin, Thailand. Budin Isara to serve to Marcos Ellis. Lobo. Play. So both pairs unseeded. Bolden Isara and Manipong Jongit. Both a right handed combination against the Olympic Games medalists Marcus Ellis and Chris Langridge. Service over. One. Love. Well, a fun fact for you, Steen. Men's doubles is the only discipline here at the Thailand Open that home players have never won a title. They did have finalists. Last finalists were 18 Three. years ago. Patipol Untrichuk and Sukit Prakamol. That's uh, Rachinuk's coach. coach. That's correct. Lost out to Yu Young Sung and Ha Tai Kwan. Yeah. So the elder of the Yu Young Songs. That's correct, yes. The, the uh, left-hander. Left -hander. Oh. 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 I, I felt this this double here with Sara and uh, Jongjit had such potential to to really make it into top five in the world. Isara with his really, really dangerous left hand and the touch and, and reading of the game from um, Manifong Jongjit. Um, I'm not really sure they are <clears throat> in the same kind of shape now as they were back then. <laughs> it took a while for Isara to get back on court there. Clever from language held by backhand. Love. Held it for what seemed an age before he played the push. Look at that. Yeah. Super play. Uh, 
And I can tell you why that match back when they played the first time, why it took so long. That's because this man here was in it, Chris Langridge. And I don't <laughs> think there's anyone who takes longer between the rallies than he does. And he says, that's deliberate. I, I use the time that the umpires allow me to, and I don't think uh, we can blame him. So that begs the question, do you think the umpires should be stricter? Um, in not allowing such time if if the if the athletes if the players are taking it to the cusp of legality yeah. uh, yes uh, um, the ultimate answer is yes I would like them to be stricter I would first of all I would like them to be consistent and second I would like them to be consistent and, and uh, uh, stricter so that we can have continuous play yeah um, we also perhaps remember the uh, Danish combination of Bo and Morgensen. I mean, they also took a really, really long time in between the rallies. Yeah. So finally, the one pair are off the mark. Well, when they reached the semi-final 12 years ago, Isara and Jongjit, they lost out to Chun Tan Fook and Lee Wanwa, who then lost in the final. There's a, sort of an all or nothing pair because any they're not interested in playing long, long rallies. So they go for the chance whenever it's there, and that can be really difficult to play against a pair who yeah. plays like that. Yeah. Especially if they get off to a good start and you get a little bit nervous. So uh, all credit to uh, Ellis and Langridge for, um, for being there from the beginning and uh, sort of setting the pace. Nine, one. I also think a lot of credit to, to both players, but, but especially to, to Chris Langridge for what we talked about in the, in the last match in the women's doubles, seeing that there's something that you need to be better at if you want to be competitive and then actually go for it because he, he was a late bloomer in, um, in the men's doubles. Ten, one. I think your point about Isara not being in the best of shape right now has really been exposed so far in the match. Yeah. 11-1. Racing like through this. It looked like he wanted to call it an Uber. Change it there. <laughs> Get to that one. saying but that's again one of those situations i mean what, what could he say it's just 12 rallies since he set them on court and they won 11 of them yes so the only thing is to reinforce what they've yeah. done so well that they've come out focused and with pace and even by saying it he risks uh, sort of um, triggering one. them starting to say oh yeah we did that we did that. how did we do it actually and so on yeah. and, and whilst thinking about that you can lose it. Yeah. But a good idea to flick. So we saw two eleven. Three 
Chris language was another rally trying to encourage the service judge to uh, enforce a rule that doesn't exist anymore. But the racket should be pointing in a downwards direction. That is not the case anymore. It was. Yeah, it used to be. My impression is that um, John Jid and Isara, they are not part of the um, Thailand national team. Um, I'm not totally sure if it's correct. Do you, do you have more information on that, Joe? But uh, I think I think it was the case at least a couple of years ago. I don't think they've uh, rejoined. No, I don't think so either. And that means that I could imagine that it could be really, really difficult to um, keep up the motivation during this uh, long uh, lockdown here to yeah. to go and do the hard work day in and day out. It's clearly affected different players differently. No, um, no big mystery in that. We've also seen players quit their career. Jelle Maas from the Netherlands, he, um, he quit and uh, got a job offer. And, and there's some that has retired due to, to age, but, but it might have been sort of like uh, sparked it that um, we never really knew when badminton was going to come back. But that's why it's so wonderful that we've got these two Thailand Opens followed by the, uh, the World Tour Finals. Yeah, it's, it's fantastic. It's, it's, and I have to say the organisation here from the moment we arrived has been superb. The protocols put in place, keeping everybody separate. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's been tough on some. We we we, we can see that, and um, some of the things we can feel ourselves because we're in the same hotel. Yeah. But um, it's an opportunity to play badminton that um, otherwise wouldn't be there. Exactly. Good shot. Yeah. Service over. It's Six, totally one-sided at the moment, isn't it? And I can't see that changing, in all honesty. And, uh, it, it looks a little bit like when uh, when Isara was injured during those World Grand Prix finals. And, and, uh, Do you mean Super Series finals? Super Series finals, that's right. Yeah. That's right. Um, and for some reason, he, he insisted on finishing all three group matches, but he was injured in the first match, and it, it mm. actually... I don't suggest that he's injured right now. I just don't think um, that so far they've played that well. They're, of course, trying to take the pace out of the match. Eight, 17. Seventeen. 
But it seems to me as if the English combination has just gone off the ball. And they have, they have gone a little bit off the ball because they got such a big lead, so they feel that okay, now we're safe. Yeah. And if they if they fall down a little bit in pace, then um, Isara and and Jongji, they might resurface. Service oh. over. Eighteen ten. Won the last big world tour event in um, in Denmark. I, I think actually uh, I'm not suggesting that they're favourites to win this tournament either. But I think that uh, the conditions are are not that bad for um, for language and Ellis. That is over. The slow conditions. Slow conditions. Marcus Ellis, one of the players in uh, in best shape, plays two categories uh, at high level. Um, the defense is, is already quite good, but it gets a little bit extra help here with uh, a little bit um, slow shuttles. So, yeah. um, service one gone too high. Service over. 1911. Yes, yes, yes. Looked as if he was going to play the smash. The sky's drop shot point. across court. A wonderful way to bring up game point opportunities. Look at that. That's super. Twenty-one thirteen opening game to Marcus Ellis and Chris Langridge. First game won by Marcus Ellis and Chris Langridge. Wasn't 21, as close as 13. twenty-one thirteen as far as standard of play is concerned. No, it wasn't, not at all. So twenty-one thirteen in seventeen minutes. hear what was being said there by Anthony Clark. Yeah, microphone is on the uh, camera. 
filming them and with the uh, social distancing and so on, it's uh, one, one, limited seconds. how close the cameraman one, one, can, can get so the microphone can actually pick up what um, they're discussing in that uh, interval. So the winners of the Denmark Open, Ellis and Langridge. One game to the good. And the tie pair are going to have to up their pace considerably if they are to make it a third game match. Oh, that's clever from Marcus Ellis. Oh, come on, get up. Get up. Whoa! Didn't need to. No. <laughs> Having a little lie down Sorry. in the middle of the rally there. One. Look. Extraordinary. Is almost a walking pace at the back of the court. Gosh, that's way long. Service over. A shadow of him, wow. his former self, yeah. isn't he? I don't think there's a whole lot of consecutive smashes left in him. a super block from Ellis. Three, one. Look at that. It's the awareness as well as the yeah. skill, isn't it, Steen? Yeah. The split second recognition of situations. A good yeah. flick serve. Three, oh.
think they're saying that it's Four. double movement Three. on the serve, both the English players. Oh. I don't think it's about bracket head being high. I think they're talking about double movement yeah. or two forward movements or stopping or... There's nothing there. Flutter smash that time. Good variation. Did you get that, Steen? I think it was um, that he was not to um, dispose of the shuttle before it was being approved by um, the most umpire. importantly the umpire, but I think um, he was disposing a shuttle that the English pair had, had won a rally with, and uh, so he should basically give it to them, and they could decide, or he could at least sort of... Um, Encourage them to change it. Oh, the racket's gone. Yeah, he's back home. Yeah, this is single. Oh, oh skating wide. Yeah. a flat smash racket he got there. <laughs> <laughs> what a rally. I'm joined it is taking the chance to sit down on the uh, HSBC coaching bench, or maybe it's not coaches, it's players bench. That was a long rally, so whilst <laughs> language is um, <laughs> keeping uh, track of his rackets and so on, then uh, John is just having a drink of water. 65 shots. Yeah, longest rally so far. <laughs> Kevin in this match, that is. Kevin and Gideon, they could play a whole set <laughs> on 65 <laughs> shots. <laughs> yes, yeah, sad not to have Sukumolio and Gideon here. Oh. Oh. Service 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 error, just short. Six. Five. No avail in the end. Seven, five. Oh. 
Yeah, that was a good sort, of, sort of delightful racket yeah. skills Six, that you were talking about seven. earlier. Excellent touch, excellent flat game skills. And he was at his best. Second time he's been faulted Eight. for too high. Six. his footing. I don't think an ankle went or anything. Oh, it was just, he was throwing himself actually. Cautiously. That was a delightful block and move forward from Marcus Ellis. Seven, seven. Yeah. Ten, seven. Ten, seven. Oh. It was. We know that he's not at all a net player in the men's doubles, so it's moments like that that um, you cherish and uh, you put in the um, self-confidence video and say hey you can play at the net you get better yeah. at the net better yeah. and better so we can play in the opposite positions as well Point advantage. Well, when you consider the opening game it was 11 1 at the mid game interval. Certainly a better performance by the Thai pair here in the second game so far. Second. 
seven. Come here. That's Sorry. such a good flick serve. Twelve, seven. <laughs> Thirteen, Nine. seven. Perfect serve there. <clears throat> That was a good save. Fourteen, yeah. Eight. Oh. That is so well. That's the first service in the English combination, 14. isn't it? I think it was. Flick serve. Uh, they've been quite successful with their flicks in this Six, match here, yeah, relying on the defensive. Um, the time pair got in a good position for the return. But it's been. There was this little um, fight back beginning of the second game but otherwise it's been just as much one-way traffic as in in yeah. the first game in my opinion I, I, I think we have to commend Ellis and language for um, um, keeping um, keeping their attention keep paying attention keep being there Janssen from Germany, or Leighton Davis and Manota from New Zealand. Service Do you know the result of that one? Ten, I don't, I don't think it's uh, played yet. I think no. they were only to play later tonight uh, on court three, as I recall it. Yeah, last match on court three. But um, Ellis and Language are going to be the favourites, no matter who the uh, opponents are. that Mark Zellis becomes the busiest person mm. these three weeks here because they are they are on track to qualify for the World Tour Finals Ellis and Language but they're not completely so so a good 19, result here in the 10. first tournament that would um, be very helpful yeah
persisting with that flick and it's serving yeah. them well. Yeah. Match point opportunities. Match point ten. First time of asking. And Marcus Ellis and Chris Langridge safely through to the second round. 21-13, Just under and 40 minutes. 21-13, So job well done. By the English pair. Mm, quite obviously, the win in the Denmark Open has given them heaps of confidence. So just waiting for his partner to gather all of his rackets, get himself organised. take leave of centre stage and that's our last match of the day. Day one of competition here gives us a chance to reflect back on what happened today and all started at nine o'clock this morning with the three-time beaten finalist here at the Thailand Open, Busanan Ongbangla Arangpan, coming through in two straight games against Jacquet of Switzerland. Then there was a major upset in the mixed doubles an hour and 12 minutes because the number six seeds Faisal and Wajaya went down to Ranki Vredi and Ponapa. In fact, the Indian pair had two match points in the second game, which as you can see was a marathon game, but couldn't convert, but did win the third. Then in the men's doubles, Alfian and Ardianto, the Asian game silver medalists, uh, came from 18-20 down in the deciding game, so to save two match points before winning 22-20 against the Thai pair. Anthony Sinisuka Ginting, the winner of the 2020 Indonesian Masters, he needed three games to beat the Korean number one. And the world number one in the women's singles, Tai Su Ying, had a very close second game against the Thai youngster, just 18 years of age. She's shown she's got a lot of potential. Then it was back to men's singles and a battle of the bronze medalists from the last World Championships. And it was Guntapon Wangchalon, the Thai number one, who beat the 2017 winner of the Thai Open, Sai Pranith. Then it was mixed doubles and the number one seeds and world championship silver medalists Puavara Nukro and Teirat Tanachai coming from a game down to beat the young Malaysians. But what potential for Hu and Chia. Then it was men's singles and the former world champion and the reigning All England champion Victor Axelsson uh, was in terrific form. It uh, didn't give uh, Tamerson any chance whatsoever. 12 and 6 in just 34 minutes. Then it was women's doubles and the number four seeds uh, Kim and Kong who outclassed and outplayed Ponifer and ready today. And as we've just witnessed in the men's doubles, the Olympic bronze medalists and recent, recent winners of the Denmark Open, Ellis and Langridge uh, beating Isara and Jongjit in two straight games, just under 40 minutes that. So uh, more first round action tomorrow, same time as today, that's 9 a.m. local time. It's 0200 GMT. From all of us here in Bangkok, especially from Steen Peterson and myself, Jill Clark, we'll see you tomorrow. Bye for now.